welcome to St. Mark's Music and Message. We are so thankful for the opportunity to spend time with you even though we aren't together in person. As we continue in this season of Lent, it is our prayer that each of us uses the remembrance of the sacrifices made by Jesus Christ to spur us to self-examination, repentance, and draw closer to Christ. With that humility, let us now come follow Christ with today's music and message. Join me in the call to worship. We trust in you, O God, for you are faithful. Show us your ways and teach us your paths. We wait for you. Lead us in your paths of truth. Do not remember our failures. Out of your merciful grace, forgive us. You are faithful, O oh God. Your love is steadfast. We lift up our souls to you and praise you always. Let us pray. Faithful God, you called all creatures into being, and you care for each one. Send your grace upon your people gathered here, that we may follow your ways of truth and walk in the paths of steadfast love, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that, as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture passage is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 7 through 14. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. I wonder if you remember that this coronavirus pandemic started to become real in our life around this time last year during Lent. Some Christians often joked about how 2020's Lenten season felt like the Lentiest Lent ever. As I shared in my Ash Wednesday message, Lent is all about self-examination and repentance. For Christians to reflect upon our need of God in light of our helplessness as mere dust. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And this pandemic has forced all of us to confront our helplessness in a way that has not been done before 
in a very long time. And often, when we are stuck at home isolated and quarantined, when all we can think about is how little control we have over our lives, and when we continuously confront human mortality and sinfulness, people turn to prayer, whether Christians or not. Prayer is present everywhere, across different religions, across people who are religious, spiritual, all of the above or none of the above. We all pray in some form or or fashion. Its practice allows us to help better connect with ourselves, with our best selves, and beyond ourselves, drawing us closer to what is really important, to what is truth, to what is the right path regarding our decisions and directions, and to what is a higher power. For Christians, prayer helps us to draw closer to God. This is our way of communicating with God and how God communicates with us. Prayer is our way of relationship with God. And being in relationship with God means being able to enjoy what God offers, namely love, forgiveness, healing, acceptance, joy, and life. As Christians, we also believe that God created us to be animals who desire to pray. We are not only social animals, but also praying animals. So the question for us is not so much why we should pray, but how we should pray. As re-examination is appropriate and necessary for this season of Lent, I would like to explore with you, starting this Sunday, the question, how do we pray? On Ash Wednesday, we read the portions of Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus shares that if our practices of generosity, prayer, and fasting are about self-recognition and self-righteousness, then we better check ourselves. For God rewards those who do these things in secret, those who give, pray, and fast all for God's glory and not our own. And in the middle of this teaching, Jesus adds an additional lesson regarding prayer. He says that prayer is neither about the quality nor quantity of our rhetoric, for God already knows what is needed for us even before we ask. Again, prayer is not about impressing God or an audience with our words or with the delivery of our words. God already knows our spoken and unspoken prayers. The question begs, then how should we pray? To this implied question, Jesus lays out a version of a prayer known to us as the Lord's Prayer, saying, pray then in this way. The word of the Lord's Prayer is how we pray according to Jesus. We may all find it odd and interesting that Jesus gives us an actual prayer rather than parables or lessons on the ways we should pray in terms of attitude, approach, or even methodology on how to pray. In Luke chapter 11, There is a different account of how Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer to His disciples. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after His prayer, one of the disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus replies, When you pray, say this, and then lays out a prayer known to us as the Lord's Prayer to them. Jesus follows this account with a story of persistence where a man kept pestering his friend at a midnight, beating on his door until the friend got out of bed and gave him the bread he needed. Often, what we take away from this story of persistence 
is that we should persistently pray and ask to receive what we want from God. But through a more comprehensive look at this passage, it seems like Jesus' teaching actually ought to simply compel us to persistently pray the way Jesus taught us to pray, which is the Lord's Prayer. The early Christians understood this teaching correctly and thus repeated the Lord's Prayer three times each day as a devotional practice. How do we pray? This has been a tough question for me personally, as a church planter and as a new father. I frequently ask this question to myself, how am I going to teach others to pray? There is also a bit of insecurity I carry regarding prayer as a person who has gotten lost in between the words of silence, glossolalia, which is speaking in tongues, and liturgy. While prayer is my second nature, it is still a mystery to me. In recent days, the topic of prayer has been ever present in my conversation with others. The importance of prayer and the need of prayer. I do not think it is an understatement when we say prayer is the most important thing a Christian can do. That prayer is what makes a Christian a Christian and a church a church. But to my earlier point, we all pray. And prayer is also what makes a human a human. So then, how should Christians pray? This question kept brought me back to think about the Lord's Prayer. Stanley Haroas and Will Willimon note that when you are asked the question, who is a Christian? The best answer you can give is, a Christian is none other than someone who has learned to pray the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a gift to us which we would not know without Jesus, who said, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. The Lord's Prayer serves as a model for all our prayers as we do not know how to pray as we ought. And as Thomas Aquinas writes, the Lord's Prayer is not only a rule for our petitions, but also a guide for all our sentiments. Finally, the Lord's Prayer guides us, shapes us, and transforms us as God's people whose daily actions reveal God's love for the world. We are what we eat. We are the books we read. And we are also the prayers we pray. In praying the Lord's Prayer, we become the people God has called us to be in Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you are a lifelong Christian like me, how do you pray? And what has been the role of the Lord's Prayer in your life? And if you are new, are still unfamiliar with the Christian faith, what has been the biggest obstacle to or question about the prayer? I invite you to join me in this journey of exploring the Lord's Prayer. Being like that one disciple who asked Jesus, what are the most important requests in the Bible? Teach us to pray. Amen.
And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please receive this benediction. The first step on the journey, that of readiness, is one of the hardest. We keep thinking that we have forgotten something. But God has called you by name to this journey. You will have all that you need. So go in peace. Know that God is going with you. Amen.